Hi everyone welcome back to Mechanical Diaries YouTube channel. In this video I am going to explain about flange management, gasket management, and torque management. So please don't skip the video and don't forget to subscribe my channel and share with your friends. First we'll see the flange management. Flange management is not only important for refinery, it is important for all industries. Let's start the topic. Before know the flange management, we should know about the flange standard and types of flange. What is flange standard? It means dimensions, material marking and technical specifications for flanges. It's called flange standard. There are five types of standard in refinery. First, it's ANSI B16.5. ANSI means American National Standards Institute. Second, it's mostly common in refinery is ASME. American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Third API 6A, American Petroleum Institute. Fourth is ASTM, American Society for Testing and Material. Last is BS1560, it means British Standards. These all flange standard for refineries. Next we'll move to types of flanges. There are seven types of flange in refinery. First it's a welding knack. Second it's a socket weld. Third screwed flange. Fourth slip on flange. 5th blind flange, 6th lap joint flange, last is orifice flange. Now we'll see the details of those 7 flanges, please watch closely. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. First we'll see the welding neck flange. You seeing the diagram of welding neck flange, it's butt welding joint and pipe. Please keep in your mind, weld neck flange hath, but joint only. Next it's a socket weld flange. That red color is a pipe seating area and pipe, then socket weld. That's why this flange called socket weld flange. Next flange is screwed flange. Screwed flange don't have any welding joint, only have threaded. Which flange have inside thread, it's called female threaded flange. If thread be external, it's called male threaded flange. Then threaded pipe. Fourth flange is slip on flange. Mostly this kinds of flange will be used in very low pressure line only because this kinds of flange is easily get leak. Flange be weld with pipe and raised face area. Fifth flange is blind flange. It is mostly used for dummy purpose. I hope everybody know about blind flange. We'll move to next flange. Next flange it's lap joint flange is very similar with slip on flange. That's why many people have confusion with these both flanges. I will explain the difference between this both flange. First we'll know about the parts, its stub end and movable flange. Basically lap joint flange. It's movable, so we can align the flange joint easily. Because lap joint one end will be weld and other will be free movement, it's a stub end. But slip on flange, it's not a movable. And flange ID is more than the pipe OD. So there is a chance to leak. Finally, we reach the last flange. It's a orifice flange. First know about the orifice. What is orifice flange and what the purpose of this type of flange? Orifice flange it's used for. Measure the flow of products inside the pipe. Parts of orifice flange is threaded point to fix the transmitter probe, then raised face flange and pipe. I explained the details about flanges. Now I am going to explain about flange facing. There are five type of flange faces are there. First it's flat face. You can see the red color arrow. That location called flange face. Second it's raised face. Mostly everyone will know the raised face. Third is a ring type joint face. This flange always used in high pressure process line only. Fourth is dung and groove flange. This flange will come, two pieces, one it's a male and, second it's female. You can check the image, it's a dung and groove face. It is similar to RTJ flange, last it's a lap joint. End of this video I will explain the difference between slip on flange and lap joint flange, so please watch until the last. As of now I hope you know about flange management. Next we'll move to one of the most important things, it's gasket management. From gasket management, first we should know the gasket specifications. What is gasket specifications? 
When you are going to work in flange tightening work, first you should know the specifications. It means which types of gasket and material of gasket, size, temperature and pressure it means rating, finally standard. For example, which types of gasket, metallic or non-metallic, and material it's stainless steel or carbon steel. We should check before start the job. And every flange and pipes, their standard size will be used. It start from half inches to 24 inches available. Each and every flange have size and class. Class B start from 150 to 2500 class available in all size of flanges. Finally standards of pipe and flange. Before start the job. You should know the standard of pipe and flange. It's like ASME standard or ASTM standard we should know first. In future I will upload separate videos for details of piping. So stay with me. Next we'll move to types of gasket. Basically there are four types of gasket available in refinery. Metallic gasket, semi-metallic gasket, non-metallic gasket and liquid sealant. This all four types of gasket. Now we'll see the images of metallic gasket. Metallic gasket also have three types. First it's a solid metal. This types of gasket also called a TJ gasket. Then hollow metal O-ring. This types of gasket mostly will be used in rotating equipments. Please watch continuously. And corrugated metal gasket. I will going to explain the specifications of metallic gasket. Gasket specifications means types of gasket, material of gasket, rating of gasket, standard of gasket, and where it will be used. Please watch closely. First we'll start from solid metal ring gasket. This types of material is SS300 for AND306 and SS321 and 347 in Cornell and Monel. Solid metal socket will be available in 150 class to 2500 class. Standard is ASM EB16.0. This types of gasket will be applied all types of ASME flanges. Next it's hollow metal or ring gasket. This types of gasket material is various grades of Inconel and stainless steel. And there is no temperature and pressure. It will be used in high vacuum location only. Also there is no standard for this gasket. This types of gasket mostly will be used in mechanical seal. I hope this information maybe you know first. Last it's a corrugated metal gasket. This type's gasket will be come in soft aluminum, copper or brass, stainless steel and Inconel model. And rating is 150 up to 2500 will be available in refinery. And also there is no standard for this gasket. Application for this gasket it's maybe you know. All valves bonnet gasket will become in corrugated gasket only. And some exchanges have this gasket. Next we'll move to semi-metallic gasket. Semi-metallic gasket have two types only. First it's a spiral wound gasket. Maybe everybody knows about this gasket who worked in refinery. There is inner ring, outer ring and spiral wound will be the parts of this gasket. Next it's a jacketed metal gasket. All exchanger gasket like bundle gasket and channel gasket will become in jacketed metal gasket only. Come to the next. It's specification of semi-metallic gasket. Spiral wound gasket standard it's ASME B16.0. And application it's all types of ASME flanges we can use. Jacketed metal gasket we can use in 150 class up to 2500 class. Application is all type of exchanges gasket and valve bonnet. Please keep in your mind. Jacketed metal gasket and corrugated metal gasket is different. Not a same, but both applications is same. Next it's a non-metallic gasket. Non-metallic gasket have four types. First it's a rubber gasket. Second it's a graphite sheet gasket. Third it's a sealant tapes. It's also called Toflon tape and gland packing. Fourth, it's a compressed joint sheet gasket. This gasket, also called Aspastos gasket in refinery. Non-metallic gasket specifications it's while you are going to work in non-metallic gasket. First, you should check the types of gasket and which material. And temperature pressure of the process line. 
rubber gasket material will become in natural rubber and ethylene propylene dean rubber rubber gasket temperature it's zero because temperature will be damaged rubber gasket so we cannot use in hot lines we can use this rubber gasket up to 150 psi pressure graphite sheet gasket material will become like some gasket will come with metal inserts and some gasket will come plainly graphite gasket can be used in 250 psi pressures and temperature it's 220 degrees centigrade up to 550 degrees centigrade final one it's a compressed joint sheet gasket this gasket material will become in asbestos and non-asbestos and fiber compressed joint gasket we can use in 1500 psi pressure and temperature is 100 degrees centigrade up to 300 degrees centigrade then last gasket is liquid gasket or sealand in refinery we are using this sealand mostly will be applied with asbestos gasket for more sealing material is silicon gel and maximum temperature is 59 degrees centigrade up to 329 degrees centigrade we can use as of now we finished the flange management and gasket management now we'll move to most important management it's torquing management from torque management First, we should know the sequence of flange bolt for tightening. Please watch closely. Maybe it will help you while you are going to tighten the bolt by torque machine. First, what is flange sequence? First, count the total bolt of the flange. Then mark the number like the image. Here I give some examples. For bolts, 8 bolts, 12 bolts, 16 bolts, 20 bolts, and 20 for bolts. This is the sequence numbers for those standard flanges. From this standard flange I took 12 numbers of bolt flange for your clarification now you are seeing that 12 number flange please mark their numbers like this image number one mark on the top of the flange and number two mark on the direct opposite of number one number three mark on the right side of the flange and number four mark straight of the number three this 12 numbers of bolts you have to divide it by three sets First set 1 to 3 and 4. Second set it's 5, 6, 7, 8. Third set it's 9, 10, 11 and 12. Please mark like this image. If you tight the bolt like this pattern you can avoid the leak 100 percentage. After this sequence, next is method of tightening. Flange tightening there are 5 types of methods in refinery. First hand spanner by manual tightening. Second impact wrench. Third manual torque wrenches. Fourth hydraulic torque wrench by pneumatic. Last, it's a hydraulic bolt tensioner. This five method, it's a tightening method in refinery. Next, we'll see the details of tightening methods. First, it's a hand spanners. I hope everybody will know how to handle the spanner tightening. So I will move to the next method. It's the impact wrench. Impact wrench will work in pneumatic only. Impact wrench will come in different size of drive like half inches, three quarter inches and one inches and more size available in refinery. One small video for you. How to use impact wrench. First, you have to choose correct size of socket and drive of the impact machine. By this impact machine, you can tight and lose the bolt. Impact wrench, it's a good tool for tight more bolt in one flange, like finfan plugs and surface condensers covers. Third, it's a manual torque wrench. Manual torque wrench mostly we can use in low torque value flanges. First you should know what is the torque value for flanges. It means every flanges and exchanges parts bolt must be have some torque value. Because if you tight more, maybe flange gasket will get damaged. So while you are going to tight the flange by manual torque wrench please check the torque value of the flange. Next one more small video for you. How to use manual torque wrench. By this manual torque wrench you can use for tight and loose the bolt by the original torque value. Middle of the wrench one screw adjustment will be there to set the torque value. This is a section for set the torque value and you have to choose correct spanner size otherwise socket will damage the bolt. Next it's a very important and common method of tightening in refinery it's called hydraulic torque wrench. Mostly this kind of hydraulic torque will be used in high pressure flanges and exchanges parts bolt tightening only. Hydraulic torque have some special parts. 
First pneumatic pump. From this pump we can set the torque value as per manufacturer value. Then head drive. This drive will come separate spanner size only. And connecting hose. Hose be used for connect the pump and drive. Last method is hydraulic bolt tensioner. This method mostly used in all critical flanges. Bolt torquing and bolt tensioning are same, both used for seal the leak. Bolt torquing is a rotational force. Bolt tensioning is hydraulic load force. In this video I cannot explain full details of this both tightening method because this is very important chapter. So I will upload one separate video of torquing and tensioning in future. So join with us, stay with Mechanical Diaries. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and share with your friends.